go to the um, to the dark side, like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Go to the dark side, stay on that light side. Because they'll have you trying to do anything to get a record deal or, or a movie uh, situation or a TV show. Man, I've not seen it all. Mm -hmm. it is the, it is the record, it's the major record labels, has it changed? How's the major record label, the record label, has it changed in the past from, from now to back then? And if so, why? What, what do you think is going on? There's no more, there's no more, no more artist development going on with the major labels. They want to just check out YouTube views and videos mm -hmm. and try to make it easy come up with uh, something that's already viral. They don't want to put no work in. They don't want to invest in the artist. They don't want to invest in the situation. Mm -hmm. They just want to see kind of situation where they can have 20 uh, Justin Bieber sound alike. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, from from aspects of the A and R, you know, um, the A and R these days are much younger than they were back in the day uh, with the labels. So, uh, it, you know, for the artist that is looking for a, a deal with a record label, it, it's it's kind of more difficult because you know the A and Rs are a little bit younger and not as seasoned as the ones uh, back in the day. Mm hmm. Wow, that that is amazing. We got my boy Curtis B and his boy live with us right here on B ninety seven FM. We're talking about the hot we're talking about these major record labels and independent artists and stuff, man. What do it take to become a real independent artist? A foundation, um, Donnie. Uh, I believe and I preach here in Virginia to all the artists that I deal mm -hmm. with. Uh, it takes a foundation. You know, uh, mm -hmm. first your foundation first, uh, then you have to promote yourself. And you have to invest in yourself. Uh, you, you know, a lot of people think it, it's a free ride, uh, but you have to invest in yourself as far as studio time, as far as promotion. Uh, that, and that's outside of, you know, an artist having uh, management. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people think, you know, it's because you got management, it's all on the management to do those things. No, it's, it's, it's on the artists uh, themselves. I mean, you know, you have to, uh, in, you know, promote yourself. You, you, know, you know yourself better than anybody else. So mm -hmm. that, that's what it's going to take for the independent artists today, uh, promoting themselves um, and, um, you know, give, giving good product and always keeping good music coming. When you're looking for, you as an artist, as a major artist, you guys, when, you are, when you're looking for artists, what are you looking for? What, what, what type of style are you looking for when you're dealing with an artist? Authentic. For someone mm -hmm. to be authentic. And okay. Not be trying, not try to be like somebody else, or try to like dress like somebody else, but try to be um, something that they're not. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can look in that mirror and say, "That's me in that mirror," and and somebody that can believe in themselves. So you know, mm -hmm. if you believe in somebody. Not, oh yeah. They really believe in themselves. They ain't always trying to selfie. They ain't always trying to get the attention. They just being themselves. No matter right. What's right. Going on, themselves when there's nobody around also man let's talk about this man because i deal with a, uh, i'm like you guys i deal with a lot of independent artists a lot of independent artists send me their music and what i'm noticing about their music man is they, they taking it straight from the studio and they sending it to the radio station and it's not it's not even mix and master how important is it for that specific song to be mixed and mastered <laughs> hey, we have to talk about it because, man, we have to talk about it because I get it every day from different artists. Oh, man, you're getting it first, you're getting it first. But, but, but here's the deal, here's the deal. I don't want to get it first if it's not mixing master. Do that make, do that make any sense? Yes, but Donnie, that goes back to what I, I, I first stated about foundation. You know, right. when they don't know the foundation, they don't know those things. They don't, right. they don't know the business side. They don't know that their music has to be mixed and master. They don't know their music has to be tagged in the studio. They don't know these things. So that's mm -hmm. why you, you, may, you may get an artist that send you music because for one that, uh, the average artist, that's all they, they, they think it is. If they go in the studio, they, they spit a rhyme out, and they throw the song to you, you throw it on the radio, and they sit back and wait for a check. And the reality wow. is, <laughs> if you get real, if you want to get real, I'm going to get real with it. Y'all ain't get real, man. man. <laughs> and if it happens here in VA, uh, when the guys don't get a check, uh, I tell her it's 11 o'clock, somebody's dead. That's the reality. 
And I, I try to tell these guys, you know, the money's not going to come like that. People that's right. That's think right. That, that it's going to come just like that, when, especially when they send you the track and they, they're looking for you to play it. And then when their homeboy calls and says, yo, man, I heard the track on the radio, then they're looking for the check to be in the mail the next day, and that's not real. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You, I agree with you 100%. And, and, and you know what? I definitely want to say a big shout-out to all the independent artists. I am glad that you guys came on the show to talk about that, man, because we got a lot of independent artists that are tuning in to us right now from all across the country, overseas. We deal with a lot of uh, major artists and a lot of independent artists from overseas that are tuning in to us. So I'm kind of glad that you guys are kind of giving us the, some good information. Y'all getting free, good, free information, real information that you probably pay a million dollars for. You're getting it free from these fellas right here. They're going to keep it real because they've been in the music game for a long time. So they know what to expect, how to deal with it. And that's what, that's what I tell independent artists all the time. You got to work hard. You got to not only work hard, but I want to also talk about this, man, because a lot of these cats, uh, are not even uh, are not even connected with BMI and ASCAP. How important is it for them to get their music with either BMI or ASCAP? Let's talk about that real quick. Well, well let's go ahead and start with Sound Exchange. That's digital. Mm-hmm. That's digital okay. Only Sound Exchange tags your stuff around the world uh, because most is, mostly everything is digital right now. CSAC, ASCAP, and BMI them is old school situations. So when you get on Sound Exchange, that tags you for, for whatever you do. If you're on a camera phone, if you're on the new i7, the new i8, if you mm-hmm. use a tablet, no matter what are you on, satellite, Wi-Fi, it tags your every situation with Sound Exchange. So they got to be hip to Sound Exchange first. Of mm-hmm. Being by an ASCAP, that that's the that's the the standard, and CSAC, that's that's the specialty. But Sound Exchange is the new move. Wow. Okay, I, I've been hearing about that. You are definitely right about that. And we we gotta talk about copyrights, man, because a lot of these artists, man, you know, we 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 hitting on some heavy stuff tonight. Because I want these independent artists. And I uh, real quick, man, we I gotta say a big shout out to B How. B How will be live with us tomorrow night right here on B ninety seven. So y'all make sure that y'all uh, check out my boy B How live right here on B ninety seven FM, man. But I, but I want to talk about copyrights real quick, man, because a lot of these artists music are not copyright. How yeah, important and, and is that? It's very important, and I want to make something very clear. Um, when I copyright artist material, I do it straight through the U.S. Copyright Office, uh, oh. U.S. Copyright Office, Library of Congress in Washington D.C. Okay. Um, a lot of people want to use poor man copyright, and let me quickly give you a definition of poor man copyright. That's when you take your material, put it in an envelope, and you mail it back to yourself. And the trick for that is that you're not supposed to open it when it comes back to yourself. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, hold that thought. Say that one more time. For those who tuning in to us on B97, we got, man, we got some tough brothers here. We got Curtis B, and we got always here live with us right now, man. We talking about some heavy stuff, man. Now, repeat that again, man, because I thought, uh, is that, I mean, can you still use that where you can mail it back to yourself? Is that still legal? Well, People use it, but I was just getting ready to give you a scenario. Uh, there's been a study that federal judges have uh, uh, been, you know, approaching that uh, because of forensic science, I don't know if you watch forensic files, but because of forensic science, someone mailed the envelope to you. You can take a lighter and heat the envelope and melt the glue, open it back up, take the contents out, change it, put it back in there, and seal it back up, and no one would be the wiser. So that wow. is why, um, you know, poor man copyright uh, is not really – upholding like it did probably some 20 years ago. Um, so um, the re- I, I do the real thing. Now, back in the day, it used to be you used to have to write a letter and mail in for the application, the copyright, and you have to be mindful. You have to get the right copyright application. There are uh, two forms that uh, artists will deal with, form PA, uh, Performing Arts, and form SR. Um, but now it's even more better because of technology. We have e-copyright, so you don't even have to Fill out an application, you just go online and create your account and e copyright your music. And what that entails is you know, all the information of both parties, uh, all the claimants, you know, the wow. producer, the songwriter, uh, your personal information, mm-hmm. um, and uh, address, all that sort of stuff. And then you have to, after you make your payment, then you have to upload your MP3 file. And you have to make oh, sure things okay. correct because after you upload the MP3 files in the system, and submit it 
uh, it's a done deal. But if a case does arise where we're in, uh, you have to change something. All you have to do is write a letter of uh, an amendment letter and send it in, and they will amend it accordingly. And wow. I, I want you to have to understand also, it can take six to eight months to a year to get a copyright certificate back. I have copyrighted artist material last March and just got the certificate two weeks ago. Wow. There's another way you can do it as well. You can put in a book form of 300 pages with a CD attached to it uh, for the music as well as the lyrics, and you can publish it as a book. And that's a copyright as well, and it saves you a lot of money, time, and effort. What What about email? Can 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 you also email it to yourself? Have you ever heard of anybody doing it? Also, yeah, I do that too. When you publish, when you got your stuff on YouTube, it's published on that date, and that that stands up in court as well. Okay. Okay. Copyright and publishing as well when you got your uh, channel published. Wow, you guys are gonna have to come. I, I like how you guys are talking. You guys are gonna have to come back over at least once a month and give us. I mean, really give the listeners, man, some uh, fan. I mean, some really good information. Maybe y'all can. Maybe maybe we can just make this a regular thing coming on here once a month. Cause we got a lot of independent artists that are out there tuning in, and not only that, they can go back and listen to it, man. So I might be. We we gonna have to talk out there, man. We gonna have to really talk to business, man. I'm definitely interested in you guys uh, doing this. What do y'all think about it? My dad was with the Ohio, oh. with the Ohio players. I've been in the business 48 years. Woo! That's a long time. Yeah, yeah and I've, I've, seen it. I've seen it all. Oh, and wow. I've been in 32. I've been in 32, and I, I don't have the voice, but Luther was my cousin, but I sing through my horn, so, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah, we've been in it, yeah. How, so how was that, man? Because everybody knows Luther, man. How was that? Well, actually, it's a long story. I don't have time to really get into details, but uh, he was my cousin, but uh, we did not find out until his uh, father died. Now, um, his biological father, I guess I will say this, his biological father's name was Lonnie Evans, uh, okay. a.k.a. Wow. Redbird. They called him Redbird. They called him Redbird because of his bloodshot red eyes. Uh, we all have high blood pressure. Uh, that comes from the belly of the family. And, um, you know, I used to get that when I was in high school. Why are your eyes so red? I said, it's my blood pressure, you know, and with bloodshot. They used to, you know, my family used to call me Little Red Bird, but uh, that's where it comes from. Uh, and coincidentally, uh, Luther has a brother that lives around the corner from my mother right here in Portsmouth, Virginia. He has a brother in Williamston, uh, Pennsylvania, and he has a brother down in um, Fairmount, North Carolina. That's where um, Luther's father is buried at. Uh, uh, or North Carolina on Highway 130 in Evans Cemetery. Wow. So, so both of them dead now, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Luther died yeah. 2005. His father died 2001. Wow, man. Now, they was they was very close too, man. I, I mean, they they sung together all over, all across the country. Well, that's that's why I said that I didn't want to get into it, but that um that story is not too much accurate. Uh, Luther's father's name was not Luther, uh, but like I said, that's a whole other story, man. We we, we gotta we gotta bring you back on just, just to talk about that, man, because that's interesting. Because I told him call him Luther, I told him call him Luther Senior, man. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole wow. that's a whole different uh ball game, bro. Wow, man. Well, uh, uh, real quick, man, do y'all got any quick shout out? Y'all wanna y'all wanna uh you know this this is the time where we call artist takeover. We got, a, we got a song out with Howard Hewitt called Two Dozen Roses. And uh, we want to wish all the mothers out there for Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We want to share that love with Two Dozen Roses, 24 hours of God's love. All right. I'll tell you what we're going to do right now, man. I want you to introduce that song, and I want you uh, to stay on the phone line. We, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to talk to you guys out there, but I want you to introduce that song. We're going to play it right right now. All right, y'all, and we'll we'll have a lot more coming up right here on B ninety seven FM. It's going down right here on B ninety seven FM. You go to town. 